Yeah, first of all, I would like to tell you what Utheme actually is and what we offer to you. And then I will start with my presentation. So, <coughs> Utheme offer is a, uh, mainly a template club for Joomla. And we offer more than 40 templates for different, different purposes. Um, it starts from, from clean business websites to, to playful blog layouts and as a member, you have access to all of these templates, and um, yeah, with each template, you will also um, get all the image file, uh, image source files, um, color variations, and um, with all the layouts and slices and all the things. And you do also have access to our technical support. Ah. Okay, additionally, uh, you do also have access as a member to some little JavaScript extensions we offer. Uh, we call them U-Tools. Um, yeah, it's like, like carousels, um, scrollers, tooltips, all these things. Um, and, <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, and this year really was a very, very Good year for you, Seem. We, we released version 2 of an extension called Zoo. It's a content application builder for Joomla. And uh, you can build product catalogs, download archives, blogs with it. And um, if you like to hear more about this, I think in the same room here at, after the lunch break, there will be a presentation by my colleagues Jan and Malte. And it could be very interesting. I think so. So um, first of all, I would like to ask you something. Um, do you all already know you seem, do you use our templates? So yeah, maybe my hand, <laughs> oh great, and do you like them? Uh, yes, <laughs> great. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, and yeah, if, if, you, if you use a template or if you, if you want to build a template, um, uh, you, you could ask, or you should ask you some questions, maybe, before, before you start. Um, that could be what, what makes a template a good template. And again, I would like to ask you, what do you think? What, what is necessary for a good template? What's important? Yeah? Cross-browsing, OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a good point. <laughs> I will come to this point later on. <laughs> Good. Sorry. Who who made the template? You think so? <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, different color variations of each template to fit too many purposes, okay? Modern design, so it shouldn't look like, like in the old years. Okay. <laughs> I think that are good points, and, and I think one of the um, major points is it should look awesome. Um, like, like here, Jean-Luc Picard, uh, he looks so incredibly good on this picture. And um, yeah, but it's not only about good looking, um, Good looking does include some things, and uh, it should have a clear and structured layout, a good navigation and flexible navigation. It should f fit to your company, to your personality. So, uh, if if yeah, like 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 the Apple website, for example, the the website has the same feeling uh, as their products. So it, it really you see it belongs to that company, and that's important. They wouldn't use of very playful layout, I think. And uh, yeah, we talked about it, flexibility, um, a flexible layout is very, very uh, important. You should, should uh, make sure that a good template has a lot of different options um, to, yeah, for your layouts. And if you choose later on, you want something different, you should do it with the same template and shouldn't download a different one, for example or have to create a new one. So a uh, good and flexible layout does include the possibility to use multiple columns, have 
a broad range of module positions. Um, the module should work on any position. Um, the, yeah, the navigation should be very clear and structured, and it, that includes that you have different navigations, I think, so that you have a sub-menu, for example, for special things. Yeah, another point, it should load fast. Uh, you never want to wait uh, for seconds or even longer a website to load. So um, it should be well, well, well written and that a fast website you can um, have, if it uses CSS sprites, for example, that, that mm, not as many file requests are necessary. So combine many images to, to a single one. And um, yeah, or file combining, um, that means that, you can, that maybe some CSS files, you have five or six CSS files are combined to one file. So also to reduce the number of file requests, you can compress these files with gzip, for example. And it, the template shouldn't have any bloated code. That means code that isn't necessary at the moment. If, if a module position isn't used, um, there should be no code of this module position at that moment. Yeah, <laughs> a bit thirsty. Ah. It's not as easy in English as expected. <laughs> yeah, um, search engine friendliness. We all know, I think, that content is very was the most important part of it, but a good template can support you. Um, it should have valid XHTML and HTML5 uh, code for correct reading by a robot or a semantic markup for correct interpretation. And the code should always be well ordered to, to bring the important con part of the content first in the code. Yeah, and um, it should always be very easy to, to customize. Um, there are always a lot of people with very different um, different knowledge about uh, changing a template. Or some are graphic designers, that shouldn't be a big problem, but some others just want to change some colors. That should be very, very easily done. So the template should, should, um, it should be easy to edit the general layout. And oh, it should be easy to change the logo and things like that. Um, also, you should all be able to find um, the correct path of the code you want to look at. You don't want to, to search for it. So the CSS and the HTML and the file structure should be well, well ordered and structured. And um, yeah, the images should be very easy to edit. So yeah, <laughs> you don't want to rebuild uh, the design in, in Photoshop or Fireworks after downloading. So. And should, these documents should be structured too, with uh, named layers and things like that. Um, yeah. Now let's have a look at what do we actually do to 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 make good templates. What we try, yeah, to to yeah think about all these aspects I just told you. And um, so let's take a closer look at some examples. Um, here we actually see a template called Enterprise we, we just released one or two months ago. Um, it was designed as, as a clean business or news template. And our aim was um, that it's very, very easy to customize, that it, that it fits to many different businesses. So if you just change some of the colored bars, it, it's not much work, but it already should fit to many, many different purposes and companies, for example. So very easy customization, um, good looking, modern, clean. I think it's a nice example of how a good uh, layout, structured layout could look like. And here we see a completely opposite template. Um, this was designed as, as a blog, blogging template with were very playful and very individual and uh, yeah, very warm and personal. Um, so yeah, with all these single pages, every every article is shown as a single piece of paper, and all these things. I think you wouldn't use it for many many business websites. 
Um, but but actually, some some people do like like kindergartens or um, toy stores. I didn't expect that, but it was nice to see a lot of nice customization work was there. And um, another example is a Tweety template. We usually start by thinking, what what do uh, could you use this template for? And um, that we created this when Twitter really got big. We created this as a portfolio template, for example, and and uh, released our our Tweety a tweet module extension that displays the Twitter feed. So we yeah for a personal website where you control the the Twitter tweets and things like that. A very different approach, again. Yeah. Yeah, as you can imagine, if you, if you design templates for a broad range of people and not only for a single customer, um, it's very important that it's flexible, that the layout should, uh, can be used in many different ways. We can't expect our clients um, that they, they use the template, template the same way we, we thought about when we created it. So it should be able to, to be used completely different. And so let's have a look what we what we did do to, to make our templates flexible. And here we have a look at uh, uh, some module positions in our uh, framework we created. It's called Warp 5. And it offers you a broad range of module positions and columns. And um, it's very flexible, I think. Um, you are not, it's not necessary to have position bottom one, two, three, four. You can publish as many modules as you want on any position. And even in the drop-down, um, that what I think is sometimes very nice. And um, and we, yeah, as you said, I think um, about it should have many different modules and module styles. And um, you can you can load. We always create different modules and some some more clean, and some are more to highlight things. So we try to to think about certain parts uh, what what is necessary and needed and by the by using the menu uh, module class suffix you can load these different module styles and we even created some color variations um, of the same module if you have a look at the black one called main top one this is a module in black and uh, main top two the same module in orange to highlight something maybe uh, it's very nice to use just to, to structure your layout and to highlight things and additionally, if you look at the top modules, ah, yeah, um, you can also add icons to them for structuring. You can add badges, little things like that. I think that's very nice for many, many customers to have it. And as I said before, it's, it's always good if you can publish any module in any position. Here we used our orange module and published it ev nearly everywhere. And um, yeah, it works. So that's flexibility. Um, just another look at, at our Phoenix template. Um, I would like to show you that it works in very different layouts. Um, this is the way we have it on our demonstrational website. Um, it has a right column and uh, a content right column. So to to vertical uh, columns, uh, to two modules on the top with equal width, and yeah, there's no left column as as you saw it in the in in, in the module overview. And if we look at this, we have the same template but a completely different layout. We don't have these right columns anymore. Instead, we just have a le col uh, content left column. So it's very flexible to use. It, it looks very different. And um, yeah, I think <laughs> that's great. Um, you see these two modules, maybe you, you don't see, see them at the moment. <laughs> I just go back, put a little bit back. If you see it, these two black modules, they, um, they have an, an equal width that's very nice uh, for the layout. So. Um, and yeah, and if we 
have a look at this. Or by default, all our horizontal modules have these equal width. Just, just to have a clear structure, clear layout. You don't want to dan let them dance and with a random height or width. So, and another cool thing you can see here is um, the first module has some, a little bit more content than the other ones, but all ha still have the same height. So there's a little JavaScript that matches the height of the modules to, to keep the layout clean and structured. And yeah, um, with all your theme templates, you also have the, a second option. It's called golden ratio, just something different if you, if you don't need equal width. Um, but if you need something different, it's, it's quite easy to, to add your own proportions. It's not much work. Um, yeah, here we have an, uh, it's slightly different. We have an example of, on the left, you see how, how actually the visitor of, of the website would, would see our, our columns. And on the right, you see there's a different ordering. It's, it's what you see actually in the code. That's when I talked about search engine friendliness. Um, there here on the left, you have the left first, then the content, then the right. Uh, but we, we just rearranged it for the code to bring the content first. For, yeah, to bring the most important parts to the top of the code, or to the beginning, to the start. <laughs> yeah, it's, the CSS, CSS looks quite strange to, to bring the content in front, but uh, yeah, but it works. Um, another point about flexibility is when I talk about uh, the menu. Um, here we see an example of our mega drop-down menu. Um, you have got a lot of options. You can, on a lot of different ways, you can use this uh, menu. Um, here we have two columns, for example. You can, you can add icons as well to each menu item. You can define the width of it. And um, in the second example, you have the same menu, but with different settings, so you have quite a lot of control how, how the menu looks like. Um, it's just a single column with, with sublines. And I told it earlier, um, you can even publish uh, modules in our menu. Uh, here we use the login module. So you have the login as, as, as a link. And if you, if you hover it, the login will, will be part of the, uh, the dropdown. And you can publish any module in, in these and as many as you want in, uh, our, in the menu. Um, here we have a look at uh, the sub-navigation, uh, an accordion menu, and I would like to demonstrate something different. Um, as you know, there are a lot of cool CSS3 techniques out there, but, but you often can't use them, because we all know um, Internet Explorer mainly doesn't support them. It would be nice to use them, but because you could use much less graphics and replace them by, by rounded corner, CSS rounded corners, for example, or gradients and text shadows. Um, what we actually do is we use these CSS3 techniques, but just for parts um, that are not elementary for, for the design. So we still use um, graphics for, for rounded modules. But, but in this menu, you can see some, I highlighted it a little bit because it's very hard to see. Um, some nice things where we used it. So we used a, a text shadow, for example, for, for, for the headline. You don't see it on the right. It, it's nice to have, but it's not necessary. And that's what we, what we do when we use CSS3. And all the rounded corners around the menu items, for example, it looks, it looks better. But yeah, if you are on Internet Explorer, it will work as well. Um, so we would like to use it more and more, and I hopefully by time we'll be able to use it for the whole design. I don't know how long it will take, but it would be very, very nice. Yeah, now I would like to start a, a little live demonstration, or I don't know how to call it. Um, <laughs> um, I told it should always be easy to, to edit, edit the images, and I would like to show you how, what way, you know, how we offer our image source files and why we do this this way, and um, 
yeah, show you some examples how to change some things. So um, we offer fireworks files. Um, some people ask, why don't you use? Hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, some people ask sometimes, uh, why don't you use Photoshop? Um, Photoshop is very common, I think, but um, Fireworks really is a, is a web web design or web layout tool, and it's, uh, there are a lot of features you don't have in Photoshop, and that makes it really, really powerful and the first choice. Um, so. Wait a moment, please. <laughs> um, here we do uh, have fireworks and our layout. Uh, I have to. <laughs> okay, and the cool thing about fireworks is that it's actually um, very structured. You can. Um, you always have a very good workflow because you can work step by step very easily. It offers you these pages, for example. So if we design something, we usually start with the general layout. It's not that much on <laughs> in with this template in this page, but if we go to the next one, you, you see uh, the modules. It, so you can always work step by step the same way as you actually would um, code it. Um, Next time, now the menus, the page, and yeah, with all the extra things. And you can, if if you want to test your your content in it, you can do so. You, you just make a bit new page contact, for example, and place your your dummy content there. Look how it how it how it looks, and um, and we also have this sliced page where we export all these images. And the cool thing about fireworks is that it uh, is a vector program, so you can you can edit. Um, I just do it here now. You you can create object very easily, um, and it has settings like like a stroke, um, a gradient, uh, color. So it's very easy to edit. In Photoshop, it would be much harder to do this. You yeah, you ha would have to look, whoa, it's all pixels and, and things like that. Um, and another cool thing is, are these sim things called symbols. Um, it's quite similar to Flash. Um, you have got an object and you can create as many instances of the same object as you, as you want. So you can, as you can see, we have, it really looks terrible here on the display. Um, um, we have this module here, for example, um, and you, you can see you have many instances of the same object, and if you change something inside these, it will change uh, all other belonging uh, modules, for example, which will change their colors too. Um, yeah, sorry. If I, if I enter a symbol by double click on, clicking on it, you see another great thing. It's called nine slices. So all our modules have the same size in, in the document itself, but these nine slices protect certain areas from resizing. Um, you, I, I talk about these blue lines here. You can move them around to protect these areas, protected this area. It really makes it easy to, to build your global layout in fireworks first before you do it on on the actual life side and you've got this library where all the modules are um, thing and if i change the height here for example you will see that these areas are still protected have the same radius in the corners and it's very very good to work it feels a little bit different to, to the other products of the Creative Suite, but 
it's worth to, to get into it. And yeah, now just let me show you how easy it can be to change a module or the color of a module. I, I take this orange here and um, just grab me the background um, gradient and change the color, the, the first color, maybe to, yeah. <laughs> you still need to find good colors. It doesn't work automatically, but hopefully <laughs> you will like it for the ladies. So now we have a beautiful pink uh, module that's it just export it and override your old files. If we go to this slice page, you will see up, up, up. I usually don't work on a Mac. It's a little bit frustrating. Where the where are the bars? <laughs> Scroll bus, there it is. Yeah, schön. <laughs> Danke. Yeah, here we see it, uh, our um, just recolored module. And and you do also see there's the image slice already um, with all the settings you need. It ha it is named so. You don't have to say save as and oh, what was the file name again? And uh, all the settings, like it's a PNG 32, and with transfer and background, everything is there. So just export it and overwrite your file, that's it. Um, um, you s here you see another example. Where I talked about CSS sprites earlier by reducing the number of file requests. Um, earlier we, we loaded a lot of images to build a module. Um, and for this module, we would have loaded, I think, seven, seven different files. And then we combined them to just a single file. And yeah, it really, really improved the speed of a website. And um, all the, the single parts of, of, of the images are positioned by the CSS. So, sorry? Yeah. Uh, we will have the chance later on as well, just for you all, but if you can. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good thing, but <laughs> yeah, I, it's a good question. It's, it's not always possible. Um, sometimes if you have a vertically repeating image, for example, it, it wouldn't work. Um, yeah, we, we tried to... to yeah, like this one module, all files belonging together are in, in one graphic. So maybe you don't use this module, but you would load, load the graphic all the time. And so I wouldn't do all images into a file. I think it's okay if, we, if you, you reduce them to a minimum, but it should always make sense. Um, yeah, I think that was my fireworks. I really hated the software when I used it first, but give it a try. Okay. Yeah. Before I uh, come to the end of my presentation, I would just like to repeat some things. And so just think about, again, what, what a good template should, should not only be good looking, it, it should always. Where's my presentation mode? But with my notes. <laughs> I need it. Herr Kottig, ah, F7. Sorry. Ah. <laughs> ah. Um, so, the, yeah, I think this makes sense. Um, if if you if you want to download a template from anywhere, just just have a look. Are all these things included? Um, doesn't necessarily mean it's a using template. So, it, yeah, does, is the layout flexible again? It should not only be look be good looking. Does it fit to my personality, to my company? Is it easy to customize? Do I have to spend hours to 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 change it? Does it match uh, actual technical standards? 
is it valid, fast, all these things I just told you about, and search and friendliness. And we really try hard to, to, to fulfill all these things, to, to make our templates really good and enjoyable. And um, yeah, it seems some of you like, like them. Um, it's very nice. Um, if you have any quest, uh, if you if you have any thought how we could um, improve it, um, you're welcome to talk to us. And if if there's something you really don't like or you think that could really be done better and others are better there at this point, yeah, please talk to us or write us an email. It'd be very nice. Um, and yeah, before I I I'm really really finished. Um, I would like to give you a little little preview about a new project by Useem that um, will open its gates very soon, and it's called the U Icons uh, to to really push your content and to bring it to high quality. <laughs> um, we will we will offer you some some uh, commercial icon packages on this website. We will sell them. Um, we have some additional free stuff. Um, I hope you will like it. It will start very soon. And you will get all the icons in, in, in different resolutions and sizes, and they are optimized for each size again. And you also get the vector images to, to, yeah, to, to change them um, for customization. Yeah, I, I think you will like it. I like them. <laughs> so thank you. I think you can read if you have got any questions. You're welcome to ask. Or if you if you want to ask me later, if you don't want to do it in the front of the public, you can do as well. And um, if you want to ask in German, I think it's okay for most of the people. Um, first, I think I will go for a cigarette, and <laughs> after that. <laughs> I will be around. I think, yeah, as you know, my colleagues will have a presentation, so I think I will be around this this room. Yeah. Okay. Okay, then, thank you very much. And as I said, you're welcome to talk to me. And, yeah, goodbye.